Does anybody here like watching scary movies? Anyone? Okay, so not long ago, I was thinking about the way people went to bed after watching scary movies. Have you ever done this? My mom would cover herself from head to toe with a thick blanket, and me too. I did it too, because we are both afraid of being dragged out of our beds by the monsters. We did it as if a piece of blanket can keep us safe. So, if I tell you I have a magic blanket for you today, a magic blanket that can keep you safe from the monsters and from the nasty people, would you buy it from me? I give you three seconds. Three, two, one. Some may say yes, some of you may say no. But anyway, it's not true. I don't have a magic blanket with me today, and the magic blanket doesn't exist. But even if it's not true, I know there are some people who would seriously buy it, because these people taught me that a piece of cloth can keep me safe. When I was a little girl, I was told that a thin layer of clothing would keep the harms away if my body parts are not shown. Easy as that. I felt like my safe zone was shrinking, that it was becoming so, so small, just like a piece of blanket. As a curious little girl, I often wonder, the Little Red Riding Hood, or Nunoi Mokdang in Thai, she was wearing a long cape, didn't she? But the wolf decided to eat her anyway. So, can clothing really keep us safe from the wolves? The answer is no. Not long ago, I was looking at news about sexual violence on the internet, and I found so many keyboard warriors blaming the victims. For example, what were you wearing? Were you being provocative? Were you being too sexy? Were your clothes too revealing? These people are trying to tell you that sexual violence happened to someone because their choice of cloning, because what they were wearing. But that's not true. And I have a story for, for that. Last year, I was running a workshop about sexual violence in this country. I met the specialist who worked in this field for decades. She told me an interesting but sad fact. She told me that the age of females who are sexually abused in Thailand is from six months old to 70 years old. Six months old is only a baby in a diaper. So now you see that sexual violence can happen to anyone. And now I believe people wouldn't ask what were this child was wearing, were the old lady was being provocative or stuff like that. But rather, you may want to ask who did these things to these people? And the answer is, it can be anyone. It can be a friend, it can be a family member, a friendly neighbor, or your lover. And the statistics show 37% of women in Southeast Asia experience sexual violence from their partners. But the reason why I'm here today is not only to complain about women or to tell you this is a woman's thing, because sexual violence can happen to anyone. Think of Songkran Festival, for example. During this festival, if you look up on Google, you can find narratives online of male, female, LGBT community. Anyone gets sexually harassed and sexually assaulted during this festival. So I want to tell you that no matter how hard you try to be careful or how well covered up you are, sometimes it still happens to you. And I have a personal story for that. When I was 17 years old, I was so in love with this boy who I thought would be the love of my life. One day, we were on the way to his friend's condo. And once we arrived, we were watching a cartoon, I believe you all know. It's called Ice Age 2, with Mammoth Slots and Nutcracker. I was having a good time, I was smiling. Suddenly, he approached me, then we kissed, and then um, he asked me a question. Hey, babe, you want to, like, do it today? And I, I, I asked back, do what? And he said, you want to, like, please, can we, like, have sex today for real? 
And I was thinking, mm, no. And I told him, no, I, I don't think today is a good idea. I'm, I'm not ready. But he didn't listen. He proceeded to grab my wrist, put it together, pinned me against a sofa. I was on my back, and I was unable to move. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. So I just cried. As I was crying, he said something to me. It was something I never imagined he would ever say. He said, why did you act like you were about to be raped? Why did you cry? I was silent. I didn't know what to say. I didn't say anything back. But deep down inside me, I was screaming. Well, I was crying because you made me feel like I was about to be raped. But I kept silent. I kept silent for seven years. I kept silent because I was afraid of being blamed for what I was wearing. I was afraid of being blamed about who I was with. I was afraid that I chose to love the wrong person. So I kept silent. But as I was growing up, I started to see the patterns. Because growing up, I started having conversations about sex. I have sex talks with my friends of all, of all um, genders. And um, my friends told me, me too. Someone I like, someone I love, someone I was dating, forced me to do something I didn't want to do. So, I came down to the two very specific questions. Wouldn't it be better if we make sure that people who we love or who we like are comfortable with our touches? Or wouldn't it be better if we learn to accept the very two basic English words, accepting yes and accepting no? So here I am today presenting you Consent 101. Now, you may think it's going to be boring, she's a nerd, it's going to be so academic, but no, it's not like that. Because I want you to think of consent as a cup of tea. Imagine that you're at your place with someone you like or someone you love. You feel like you want to drink tea, so you're making yourself a cup of tea. Then you ask the other person, hey, would you like a cup of tea? You wait for the other person to reply. If they say, yeah, sure, yes, then you can go drink tea, have tea together. But if the other person say no, don't force them, don't threaten them, don't pressure them, don't tell them that you will not love them anymore just because they wouldn't have tea with you right now or today. More importantly, remember, just because someone drank tea with you last week or just because someone promised you that they will drink tea with you today, it doesn't mean that they have to if they are not comfortable to. And most importantly, remember, people who are drunk, unconscious, and people who are sleeping, these people don't need tea. So don't wake them up just to have a cup of tea with you. Now, you all have understand the basic concept of consent. You may begin to wonder, well, is this concept going to work in reality? The answer is yes. Um, not long ago, I found a clip, a video clip on Facebook is from, is from Kenya, a city called Nairobi. Um, in this city, there was a high rape rate. And I found out that 50% of the girls say that they were raped by their boyfriends. So this organization called No Means No Worldwide, they stepped in. They made a curriculum, six-week program, teaching girls about self-defense and consent and empowerment. They make girls stand up in circle or maybe one by one, and repeating after the instructor. For example, I am strong. This is my body. I say no. Respect me. And by teaching them about their body autonomy and voicing out, during the six-week program, the rape rates drop by 50%. 75% of the girls said they were able to report to someone when they faced sexual violence, and more than 75% of the boys said they were able to stop verbal harassment on the streets. 
So now that you have understand consent and how it works in reality, I want you to participate in voicing out with me. I'm going to say one sentence, and then I want you to repeat after me. You can shout, you can yell, you can stay silent, do whatever you want, because it's all about consent today. So I'm going to say it now. I say yes because my heart says yes. I say no because my heart says no. And that is the beginning of consent. Consent is about voicing out and is about respecting other people's responses and choices. Maybe one day we wouldn't hear about the magic blanket. We wouldn't see any people blaming other people about what they were wearing. And if we put this in the curriculum, maybe we can make Thailand a safer place for all of our children. And lastly, to end this talk, if I can tell something, if I can turn back time and tell something to my 17-year-old self who was almost raped by a boyfriend, I would tell myself that. You may feel broken, weak, betrayed, hurt, or meaningless about what had happened to you, but don't let that one person ruin your life because the past did not define who you are. Just keep moving. Just keep going forward, and one day you're gonna get through this by yourself. Because you are stronger than you think you are. Then we are stronger than we think we are. Thank you.